Vette rappresenta un po' quell'italianità uh, che ha detto l'ultimo. Uh, credo di poter dire che, che tutti noi uh, siamo abituati a, 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 così, a, a intrattenere un rapporto quotidiano con il nostro paese anche attraverso la lettura dei tuoi pezzi, delle tue lettere, attraverso il forum dei tanti italians che ti seguono. Quindi in un certo qual modo la tua presenza qui è eh, una, un forte richiamo alla, alla nostra italianità. Quindi siamo veramente eh, contentissimi di poter eh, conoscerti di persona ma anche eh, così, eh, vedere eh, quello che, che ci puoi proporre questa sera eh, che riguarda questo interessantissimo viaggio cost coast to coast dall'est all'ovest che state realizzando insieme a Carl Hoffman. Eh, Beppe naturalmente è un profondo conoscitore degli Stati Uniti non aveva certo bisogno di questo ulteriore viaggio per conoscere questo paese, però questo è un anno importante, un anno elettorale e quindi da un profondo conoscitore degli Stati Uniti come Beppe non si poteva che aspettare una nuova visita in questo paese per cercare veramente di meglio capire eh, il sentimento. Let me stay here for a moment. I'll, I'll translate very briefly for those of you who don't speak Italian what he said. What he said very, very quickly is, uh, I am the Consul General of Italy in uh, the most amazing American city. The weather is fantastic and there's so much going on. And not only these media Italian people fly in, they even come by train. I mean, you, you, how could you possibly cope with that? That one, no, I'm joking. It was a wonderful welcome, so thank you, Signor Gonsoli. Uh, we'll, uh, in fact, we are um, uh, on our way. This is totally um, unexpected and unpredicted, and I'm grateful to Silvio Marchetti and the Instituto di Cultura to, to say, why don't we do something? You know, like, uh, we, I think we all, uh, Silvio, we organized all these in the last week because we are traveling by train from Portland. Maine to Portland, Oregon. Uh, all the Americans we met, they just look at us and their eyes say, I mean, why you do that? It's much faster if you fly. They don't even have to talk because Americans, I know many of you in this room are Americans, you are practical people. And I can see the point. Actually, yeah, so makes one third of the way. Uh, we are, uh, so it's Portland, Maine, it was raining. Pouring with rain, cold and miserable. Lots of lobster <laughs> everywhere. But eating lobster when you're damp and, and tired and jet lag, it's strange. The sort of psychedelic experience. <laughs> then we, we went to, to, to Boston and then we went to uh, Albany. And then we went to Cleveland, Ohio. Now we're here. And then tomorrow is going to be Milwaukee. Then from Milwaukee, a long ride to Rugby. Rugby happens to be the geographical center of the American, Northern American continent. So we're going to be there. Then we go to Malta, uh, Montana. Then we'll go to West Glacier. A and apparently there's going to be snow. <laughs> so after sort of boiling in Chicago, we're going to be freezing in, up there. Then we go to Spokane, then Seattle, then uh, it's expensive to come over here. I mean, interrail is for, for teenagers and people in their 20s, you know, on their gap year. But I'm 55. So if you want to behave like a 20 years old when you're 55, it's going to be expensive. <laughs> because people don't want to let you play. So you have to convince every single one that what you're doing really makes sense. My wife actually has been supporting me all the time. Her line is simple, say, people with gray hair. In their 50s, so you're out of that. Your gray hair is fine, but you're not part of what I'm going to say. So people in their 50s with gray hair are going to do something bizarre. <laughs> Either they buy a red sport car, or they are far too kind with their secretaries, or they do strange things, but take your train, go ahead. So I had a blessing with my, my wife. and The best option. The best option, absolutely. And uh, so we came. Uh, the Goethe Institute supported the project still. Corriere della Sera did a lot of things because the, the blog, the video blog every night, is every morning actually, is on the Corriere.it and I'll tell you if you want to see what we do, I'm going to tell you exactly. We're going to see a couple of those, by the way, so you'll see how we approach the thing. It's a travel program, it's not an in-depth. We talk about politics and economy, we talk to people, 
there's a lot of trains in there, but it's a travel program. But this this time we have a new a new project. Uh, La Sette, which is an, one of the Italian channels, uh, said we want to be on board, which is great metaphor for trains. We want to be on board. <laughs> Say we are going to be part of the project, and we are going to produce a proper feature film, an hour and a half long, Portland to Portland, Atlantic to Pacific, to be broadcast early in September as a sort of kickoff of the sort of electoral season in America, so that's going to be broadcast in Italy. In order to do this, this time are traveling with us a, a very well-known Italian director who knows America well, he lives in, uh, in New York City, he's probably trying to hide now, but I'm going to find him anyway. <laughs> there he is, that's Andrea Salvatore, and please, an applause for him, because it's, it's Gianni Shimoni who's been working with me on, on the other two trips, he's really good. They are all oh, very good. He's, he's, he's been following the Giro d'Italia, the bicycle, for 15 years, so his specialty is filming people in motion. <laughs> and today we did just that. We, we hired a tandem, Karl Hoffman and I, the German colleague that I'm traveling with. And so you have me and Karl Hoffman visiting all the Obama pilgrimage. They don't let me talk to anybody here, and so what I did is a pilgrimage. Paying homage. Actually, there are different opinions in our group about Amtrak. And I'm the most positive minded, for I'm the only one who could sleep between Cleveland and Chicago. Getting on the train at 4.30 in the morning, I slept all the way until Chicago, whereas my my, 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 my friends who are traveling with me, my fellow colleagues, um, they worked all night. And when I got up in the morning, I had my breakfast, my wonderful French toast in the, in the dining room. And uh, um, they were astonished about how I could possibly have slept in the roomette or sleeperette. No, I think um, maybe it's different the, the way you travel in Europe and the way you travel. I mean, it, in Europe, you're more accustomed to take trains. But it's fascinating the humanity you find on American trains. Um, maybe they're not as fast as the European ones, but um, they can take you safe where you want to get. That's it. Not Yes, they're not as fast, they're not as comfortable. They're, yeah, Americans, probably you always remember our names. You, I tell you Beppe once, and you're going to pass these on for five generations. You will always remember that my name, which is amazing. It, we Italians forget immediately. Dinner parties in America for Italians are a tragedy, because they all, our American friends and acquaintances, they all, you always know our first name. And you love saying it, Pepe. Yes, absolutely, Pepe. And you just don't know. And how do you ask a lady who's been telling you how hard it was to divorce her third husband and marry the fourth? That's really, that's really hard. But what is your name? You cannot do that because she she gives you, she implies that she really knows you well and whatever after two and a half year of dinner parties. So it's a tragedy. In Italians, we forget. First names, that's a real problem.